Hello, my name is Aaron and welcome to another video. Today we're looking at how to do time-lapse photography on Sony Alpha cameras. Now before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel as it lets me know that you're enjoying these videos. So, time-lapse photography on Sony Alpha cameras. This is all set up on the Sony A5100 which I'm using here, but it's also applicable on the other Sony Alpha cameras such as the A6000, the A6300 and the A6500. On the A6400, the newer one, I think there is an interval or time-lapse feature built in, so this may not be fully applicable to that camera, though may be useful as I think it may be slightly limited with the formats that you can save your time-lapse to. If you've had a play around on Sony Alpha cameras, you may have noticed that you can't see a time-lapse feature in the shoot modes menus. That's because, slightly frustratingly, it's a separate app which you have to purchase from the store. Now, that's a bit annoying because you've already shelled out for a camera, however it does work pretty well so if you can get past that one-off cost, I think it is a decent investment. Now it costs £7.99 and it's also US dollars to download this app. So first we'll go through how you actually download and install the app because no point me going through all the rest of it until you've done that. It's not the easiest process, but as I said, once it's done, it's done. Whether the process is enough to put you off, it shouldn't be because it is a good app. So what you need to do is go to Main Menu, Applications, Application List, and then Play Memories Camera Apps. Slightly convoluted, but then once you're in there, the Time Lapse app will be under All Apps for, as I said, $7.99 or $9.99 US. Before you can download the app, you'll need something known as the Sony Entertainment Network Login. This is basically an account, which means you can add your payment details to be able to download the app. Now a tip now is that if you already have a PlayStation, PS4, something like that, with an online account, you can use that same account, which can speed up the process if you've already got payment details and everything set up on that. If you haven't, which a lot of you won't, I would recommend setting up this account online first, using your phone or your computer or something, as logging in using the camera is quite time consuming anyway, so creating an account would just take absolutely ages, so yeah, set that up in advance before you log in. You also need your camera connected to Wi-Fi so you can actually access and download the app. So we'll, we'll move forward now to once the app is installed, as that's not a particularly interesting process, you'll just need to go through, log into your account on the camera, which is a little bit annoying, but once that's done, you'll be able to download the app and install it through that same menu system. Once you've gone through the installation process, you can find the installed app under application, application list, and then you can see it there ne next to the Play Memories camera apps. This is the menu you need to go to every time you want to use the app, as frustratingly it doesn't integrate itself into the camera's normal shooting modes, which is another slight downside to this app. But once you've got your head around where you need to go, this is how you access it. Once you're in the app, it'll take you to this theme selection page, which gives you a gives you a variety of default options that you can use for time lapse. This has the settings already set for you for different situations, such as night, sunset, sunrise, and night scene, and a few other options here. Miniaturize is a good fun one, as it makes everything look kind of toyish. Quite fun if you're taking a bird's eye shot, and perhaps of a busy street in a city centre, it makes all the people look like tiny little toys. I've hopefully got a little example here that you can that you use. So that one's quite fun, but generally, I think it's best to get stuck in with this app using the custom settings mode so you can get your head around exactly how these settings work. So once you've selected custom you can see all the time-lapse settings that are default on the left hand side but to customize your settings you go to the menu and then tab 1 and then application settings. So here you can see the, the different settings that you can customize. First up you've got the file format which means you can have it set to just take the stills video or video and stills of your time lapse. Basically depends how you want to use it. If you're just using it for, you know it's just going to be a video, but if you may want to access every single shot, you take the images. To be honest, if you've got space on the memory card, just do both as I find both quite useful. Next up is interval, which is the time the camera waits in between each shot. So the longer you leave this, obviously the longer it will take, but if you want to take a more, something over a longer stretch of time, you may be happy to leave camera to shoot every 30 seconds, whereas if you want to take lots of quick action, you may have it set to a much smaller interval. Next up is shots, which is the total number of shots taken in the time lapse, quite self-explanatory, but obviously the more you put in, the longer the time lapse will take, but it also means you can get more detail to your time lapses. So if you're over a long period of time with a lot of shots, you get a very rich moving scene throughout the day with lots of movement. Something like transitioning from night to day in a, in a city shot, that would look very cool. Then you have AE, which is auto exposure. You can use this to lock the image's exposure using AEL or track, which you may want if the scene is 
changing throughout the day, as I said, day to night, something like this. And importantly below this, not a setting, but as you can see, as you move these settings around, it will change the numbers below. On the bottom right is the duration, which is how long the time lapse will take to shoot. So as you can see, the number goes up if you increase the shots and the interval, as I said. And then on the left hand side is also the final duration. So you're waiting around a long time. You can see it takes a number of minutes for only a few seconds, but that's just how, the way it works. So just be careful before you set up that you've got enough battery and enough memory card space to take all these shots and that you also have enough time to hang around in that one place to complete your time lapse. A lot of scenes only require a short one, however that means obviously your clip, your final clip will be quite short, so it's what you're it's what you're aiming for. I probably recommend while you're learning this, just take a few a few short ones till you got your head around it and then you can set up your camera for a longer time lapse. Once you finish setting up these settings back on your main shooting screen, everything should function more or less as usual. The function wheel should act as normal. You can press the center button as usual to change the shooting mode. This is limited to, a, to less modes than usual as you can't take video within this mode as it's kind of already a video mode. You can change the shoot mode to aperture, manual, program auto or shutter priority. Now, as a tip, shutter priority is a good one to use here because longer shutter speeds means that you'll get light trails and sign of movement, which makes your final time lapses look a little bit more fluid if there's that illusion of movement in your shots. That's using shutter priority and increasing the shutter length. So now we'll do a run through of some of the other settings on the time lapse app so you're not missing anything. On tab one, you've also got interval priority. You can turn this off if using very long shutter speeds to overwrite the interval time between shots that you have set in the app settings. So this means that if your shutter speed is longer than the interval that you have set, you can ask this to overwrite this so that it keeps to the shutter settings that you have set. The next setting is probably grayed out for you, it is for me, which is Angle Shift Add-on. This is another app, paid for app, which costs 3.99 UK and I think it's 4.99 US. I haven't bought this as what it does is that you can add panning, tilting and zoom to your time lapses. However, if you're using editing software, something like Photoshop or Premiere, if you're using video, you're better off using that and you can add all those effects. So if you've already got editing software that you're happy achieving those with, I think you've got more control doing that yourself afterwards. On tab two, you've got your shoot modes, which I went through previously, and your quality settings. This is all fairly self-explanatory, what quality of your shots, frame rate of your video, and the resolution of your video, things like that. On tab three, you've got your focus mode. Now, I won't go into this in detail now, but if you click up here now, hopefully there will be a video going into all the focus modes available on this camera in greater depth. You also change your focus areas, whether you want your point of focus to be wide, which may be good for landscapes, to be center, which often is good for portraits, or flexible spot, which is useful if, you, if there's a specific region of your shot that you want to keep in focus. You also have exposure compensator and ISO settings. On tab four, you have white balance, which you use for color correction, depending on the scene, creative styles and picture effects. Now, to be honest, I don't really use these. They're kind of slightly gimmicky. You can add different effects. I prefer to export your video in the highest quality and you can add any kind of effects afterwards rather than it being baked into the shots that you have taken. However, you can also access that miniaturize option, which I mentioned earlier is quite good fun from the picture effects setting. So you might want to mess around with some of these, but generally I think you're best keeping these settings to standard. And on tab five, you've got focus magnify, which means that you can pinpoint your focus by tapping on the screen on the A5100. Monitor brightness, which is fairly self-explanatory. If you're outside, you're going to want it brighter and also whether you want to have test shots enabled. This basically means you can press the question mark slash bin icon to take a test shot. This is fairly useful if you just want to take one single frame of your time lapse before you get started, just to make sure everything is looking how you want it to. So there we go, that was a pretty comprehensive run through of the settings and how to set up the time lapse app. I'm not going to go into great depth of how to take your shots because that's up to you. As I said, have a play with the miniaturize option if you want something that's quite fun, but generally focus on your shutter settings to add that extra movement and use some of the scene options for nighttime and stuff until you get your head around it. Generally for the most effective time lapses, you want that illusion of movement and if you can make them, the longer the better generally, but it's quite dependent to each situation. I've scattered a few different time lapses throughout this video so you can see a few different 
examples of what they can and look like. Some will look better than others. A lot of them have been experimental for me as well. As I said, it is slightly irritating that the time-lapse feature isn't built in as standard on this camera. The software clearly has the capability of being there, and it's a shame that you have to pay a little extra for it as well. But as I said, it's a small cost, and once it's done, it's done, it's on, the, it's on your menus. Again, another small frustration is that it doesn't integrate into the rest of the shoot options on the camera, and you have to go to that extra layer of menus to get to the time-lapse. But once you've got your head around that, it's not it's not too much of a big deal, but overall I think it is worth getting. The results look very cool. It's good for cities, moving environments, clouds moving past on a, on a sunset shot, something like that. You can add them to your vlogs, travel videos. The time-lapse feature really comes into its own, into adding a bit of quality and a bit of professionalism to those types of video. So that's it for me today. Quick run through of the time-lapse app on the Sony Alpha cameras. As I said, this is on the Sony A5100, but it's also available on the rest of the Sony Alpha range. So if you've enjoyed this video, as I said before, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel as it lets me know that you're enjoying these videos and I'll keep making more of them. But that's it from me for now. Till next time, cheers.